Hello, I'm Officer Jason Rader with the Confrontation Management Section at the Training Division. I'm here to talk to you today and give you some information um, and video training on a new medical kit that we have put together called the Trauma Plate Medical Kit. After extensive research, prior training and experience, the Training Academy has a concern. That concern is that our officers are going to find themselves and or their partner um, in the need to be able to control or stop massive hemorrhaging and too far away from their vehicle in order to be able to access their blowout kit in order to take care of that problem. We wanted to put together a kit that was compact enough that allowed our officers to have the ability to be able to carry each kit on their person and provide them with the basic needs um, that they can have to be able to co uh, combat massive hemorrhaging. At this time, I'd like to be able to show you what the kit looks like and where it's designed to be carried. This is the bag and what it looks like once you've pulled it out of your trauma plate area. As you can see, it has two directional arrows pointing to each side of the package. At this point, you can put your finger on the easy access tab and open it quickly. For personal protection equipment, it has a set of black Max gloves. Quick Clot EMS Rolled Gauze is a three inch by four foot soft white non-woven gauze impregnated with an inorganic mineral that is safe and effective in accelerating the body's natural clotting cascade without any exothermic reaction. The EaseMark bandage is a latex free elastic bandage that is suited for reinforcing pressure bandages and when coupled with a hemostatic bandage, the EMS rolled gauze, it can be quite effective in achieving hemorrhaging control. It is not a tourniquet and should not be used as one. The soft T tourniquet wide has a one and a half inch tourniquet strap providing a wider compression pattern than most standard tourniquets or tourniquets with the one inch constricting band moving through a one and a half inch sleeve. This broader compression pattern allows for increased patient comfort and additional arterial compression. The tourniquet handle is machined from a single piece of high strength aluminum bar stock. The strength of the handle virtually eliminates the risk of product failure. Now let's take a look at an informational video that is provided by Tactical Medical Solutions of how to apply the tourniquet. The one and a half inch soft tactical tourniquet has a full inch and a half constricting band secured by a quick connect buckle. The tourniquet handle is machined from a solid piece of aluminum for unmatched durability and strength. The handle is notched at each end allowing it to lock in place when it is secured. The composite tri-ring mates with the handle to maintain tension. The quick connect buckle eliminates the need to rethread the webbing regardless of application location or in the event of a trapped limb. An audible click can be heard when the buckles lock together, which will be demonstrated in the next clip. Generally, a casualty with an upper extremity wound will self-splint and have minimal use of their limb, especially if there's bone involvement. So why do we train to self-apply tourniquets in this position? Applying a tourniquet to yourself in this manner is unrealistic and creates training scars.
Training should be conducted with minimal movement or manipulation of the injured extremity. Here is a more realistic method. The casualty takes a knee, indicating they are out of the fight. The injured arm is braced against the leg to allow initial tightening of the tourniquet, and the application is completed. Using a brace and training with a dead arm is a much more realistic training method. If in an open area, the ground can be used in the same manner to allow initial tightening. This is an important technique for law enforcement officers that could be wounded away from their vehicles or another type of cover. If behind cover such as a wall or a vehicle, it can also be used to assist in what we call a dead arm application. Training using these methods will ensure you are more prepared for a real-world tourniquet application. This is an example of partner aid with a two-handed application. After removing the trauma plate kit from your vest, Empty the contents and apply safety gloves. Remember, the action of the tourniquet should be as high up on the arm as possible, to the base of the deltoid. This will keep the tourniquet from slipping down the shoulder and releasing pressure. Once it is applied, we need to tighten the tourniquet so there is no radial pulse. If there is still a pulse, tighten tourniquet and reassess. Apply the rolled galls by pulling out an amount to form a wad big enough to cover the wound. Remember, we are not packing inside the wound channel. Once the wound is covered, wrap the galls around the arm and wad from high to low and then low to high to frame the dressing in place. Tuck excess underneath a previous wrap. Next, apply the Easemark bandage in the same high to low, low to high fashion as before. This will ensure that there is enough pressure to the wound itself and provide the ability for both the tourniquet and the pressure bandage to back each other up in case one loosens. Be sure to place one of your knees into the groin area to help slow any arterial bleeding. Unsnap the metal buckle and run the strap in the natural void underneath the knee. Using a sawing motion, pull the tourniquet high into the groin and re-snap the buckle and pull the strap tight. The leg application needs to be high in the groin area for optimal hemorrhage control. Finally. Turn the windless aluminum rod several times until the bleeding stops and back it up with a pressure dressing and bandage like in the previous video. In conclusion, this kit contains life-saving equipment that is to be used as needed when waiting on EMS is not an option. Also, just like your current issued blowout kit, this kit is to be used on anyone, not just you or your partner, if it means saving a life. Thank you for your attention, and y'all be safe. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Officer Jason Rader at the Training Division at 862-7617.